Hi guys, I'm Nadia Hussain and my cookbook Fast Flavors is out now. It's full of delicious recipes, packed with flavor, quick, slow, you name it. A little bit of something for everyone. Christmas in my house is not Christmas like the traditional sense. We don't have the tree, we don't have the presents, the decorations, we don't celebrate Christmas. But it is the only time of year when everybody has some time off and it's our excuse to get together. Everybody brings a dish and we're quite a continental family so we have lots of like cauliflower cheese, biryani, you name it, pancakes, we have everything. It's an affair full of food, like from all over the world. The best bit of Christmas, for me it's Christmas morning, waking up, and for me it's always breakfast in bed. We always have breakfast in bed with the kids. I grew up in a Bangladeshi household and I grew up eating rice and curry five days, seven days a week, you know, twice a day. It was rice and curry, I'm not complaining. It was a good life, it was a good life. We may get into arguments here. One thing I always have in my fridge is chocolate. Just saying, I am a chocolate in the fridge kind of girl. Don't give me none of that kind of soggy, soft chocolate. No thank you, crisp, just cold chocolate for me. In the fridge, always. I come from a family of 28 in total. Brothers, sisters, children, all of that, 28. So I know a thing or two about entertaining, feeding and trying to get ahead because your oven is going to get packed. That oven is going to work overtime. So get everything done ahead of time, whether that's roast potatoes, whether that's gravy, whether that's sides, vegetables, you name it. You can par cook all of that, pop it in the freezer and then cook it on the night from frozen, done. So you'll have already done half the work. So you're already ahead. My earliest food memory would have to probably be my mum's Korma. I remember the smell so distinctly as a child, but you really want to eat it. But then she cools it down and puts it in the fridge for three days. And a curry is always better the next day. My showstopper dish that everybody loves at Christmas would have to be my blackened lamb. So I do this delicious leg of lamb, still on the bone, where I kind of really char it in the oven and then just turn the oven off and let it cook gently in its heat. Four hours later, you get that perfect medium rare. It's really simple. And then it kind of goes really well with all the other things that we're eating, whether it's biryani, whether it's cauliflower cheese, whatever it may be, it just, it's a lovely alternative to turkey. The last thing I ate was chips, really salty chips with delicious ketchup. That is like, that is my go-to. Chips for life forever, forever. I would probably say cardamom because cardamom is one of those spices that it's like got levels. If you want a hint of cardamom, you add the whole thing with the pod. If you want like intense cardamom, you take it out of its shell, you crush the little black seeds and you get an intensity of cardamom. But what I love mostly about cardamom as a spice is that you can use it in savory cooking, like in curries, and you can also use it in sweet. So it's very versatile. So my best crowd pleaser dish would have to be from my new book, Fast Flavours. I know exactly which one it is. 30 cloves of garlic chicken. Yes, 30 cloves of garlic. It is fragrant and aromatic and absolutely delicious. Oh, that's tough. Cooking or eating? Why do we have to pick? Who makes these questions up? I can't imagine a world where I'm not cooking. I can't imagine one where I'm not eating. I love both of them equally. Maybe cooking a little bit more. No, I really like eating too. <laughs> I've had loads of disasters, but that's all a part of learning how to cook, how to bake, how to be confident in the kitchen. So I did a liquid chocolate cake and I did it in a loose bottom tin. Those ones that are kind of spring form ones. So there was a little crack in the spring form where, and then I clipped it thinking, yeah, 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 it's fine. 40 minutes later, I look in the oven and there's no cake in the oven <laughs> because it's all dripped out and baked onto the base. Well, that's it, disaster, right? Can't eat it. And I said to my husband, oh no, the cake, we're gonna have to start again. My husband comes back and I see him with two spatulas scraping this thing out. He goes, we can eat this, right? And I'm like, it's covered in chicken fat. He goes, no problem, nothing custard can't fix. And off it went and he ate the whole thing. One would be my grandma, who is an amazing cook, who even now at 90 something really does try her hand at mixing things and putting things together. And she knows by the smell of a curry whether you've done it right or wrong now. If it smells right, she's like, 
that's perfect and she knows from the go if it's wrong. Get in the kitchen and make mistakes. I encourage making mistakes because that's really the only way you're going to learn and that's really the only way you're going to gain confidence in the kitchen. Receiving an MBE, that was, uh, that was a big deal. You know, I called my mom and I said, mom, I got this MBE and she was like, don't have a clue what you're talking about. I said, never mind, give it to dad spoke to dad and dad said, I'm sure there are letters better than an MBE. I was like, thank you for keeping me humble parents, but I am proud of myself. Thank you. A scone, good old scone at school, but just like everybody's first scone, they were tough, they were not sweet, they were just not very good. But you know, they've improved since. I don't like pizza. Fish and chips, any day. You give me chicken and chips, the theme is chips. If it was pizza and chips, I'd probably be happy. Don't even get me started on the pineapple. One person that I never cooked for was my granddad, who died when I was 12. I just loved him so much. He was such a hard worker. Obviously, granddad can't come back from the dead, but David Attenborough's still alive. That's the other person I would cook for. Nobody, firstly, should ever feel guilty about eating food. All food is great, but if there's one thing that I have to kind of step back from sometimes is uh, crisps. It is my downfall. I do not buy crisps for my house because the kids know if they leave me alone with the crisps, they will not find any kind of crisp, particularly Marmite crisps. I can eat 12 packets in one go and that's me restraining myself. I could go more. Aubergines, I think they're so underused and I think sometimes they're hidden, but aubergines are the perfect sponge for flavour. They have that kind of lovely spongy texture, they're really porous, so you can really kind of cram flavour into an aubergine, whether you're grilling it, whether you're deep frying it, whether you're baking it, it has the potential to take on whatever flavour you want to put into it. So, oh my goodness, totally underrated aubergines, eat them every which way. <laughs>